Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's video. And um, well after yesterday when I talked all about how, we've been, how I've been working on matter science and getting all of that up and running and all the modules and all of that sort of business, I thought that this time I should perhaps spend a little bit of time talking about, you know, what other people in the group have been getting up to because I, I don't want it to be too much all about me. And so I'm going to start off with the outpost out here on Oliran, which is the iron planet that I was talking about last week, and, other, and possibly the week before, where Mike, Mike has come out here and built up a system that is producing, well, he's got, he's got various um, different uh, core mining setup, core, core mines around the, around the planet. They're all digging up the iron um, core chunks. They're being fed into a warehouse here, and then over here we're crushing them down. And as I said before, this means we produce enormous amounts of iron ore and a little bit of the normal core chunks and a bit of stone and so on. And the normal core chunks get processed over here down into all of the miscellaneous stuff that we're very, very used to. Um, and then we, and then this allows us to then barrel up all of the fluids that are coming out of there, or at least all the valuable fluids, and then feed it all into a train here that then can be sent up to the up to the um, orbital Oliran orbit, and then load up the, the spaceship at the wood park in here. And as you can see, this is this is run for long enough that now everything is absolutely full. We brought as much stuff stuff up as we need because whilst we do need quite a lot of iron, we're not absolutely ripping through it over here. That spaceship then flies over here to Norvis orbit where it stops here. It unloads all of the iron and all of the other stuff. All the miscellaneous stuff gets passed over to the warehouse over here where it can be then taken away by the junk trains in the normal way. That gets taken down and added in with everything else that's in the core mine, core mine processing area. And and we can then deal with all of those resources down there quite happily. But over here, we're then bringing the iron over into a specific iron train. And that iron train goes over to the secondary elevator that Tristan built. Uh, that's this one here. And they can fly in into the elevator, then go down there, and then stop off at this station down here where they can unload all of the iron. And it can be passed over into another train system over here. And the main thing that's happened, a lot of that was up and already more or less running at the beginning of the stream. But Tristan has sort of turned on the elevator. He's fed in the cables to get that actually up and working. It's brought the trains down here. And now you can see there's not a great deal going on here but in the future if we want to add in copper or a stone well maybe not copper because we don't have a planet for that but uh, stone or coal or any other any other resource we start to run short of and we've got a planet for it we can have exactly the same setup and we can just extend this upwards and put another station on the top of it and another station over here and just go up and up and up and, uh, and as far as we need to because there's loads and loads of space over here this is way out on the edge of the factory um, and then this will mean we'll have a nice steady supply of all of these things and the trains will pick up the uh, the iron ore from here and, and take it away as you'd expect and they bring it over to this station up here, which is described as a, a super low priority iron ore drop. And this is because there are there's, there's iron coming from lots of different places. We're producing iron from the uh, the core fragment processing, and that's a high priority. We want to get rid of that one, because if you don't use that up, then it might jam up and cause all of the other supplies that are coming out of the core processing to also fail. And that's where a lot of our stuff comes from. So we want that to keep running. We don't want to have any problems there. So that's the top priority. There's also a bit coming out of the uranium processing, over here, where it dribbles through. So as we, as we do the covert, or as we do the uranium centrifuging here, we get, as you can see, we get out some uranium, we get out some stone, we get out some iron ore. So that's fed into a train, in a, into a station down here that is currently it has less than a train load, so it's not expecting a train at the moment. But this is a priority um, iron ore pickup, and so the trains that come from uh, the trains that come from the core mining and the uranium processing will come over here, and we'll stop at one of these priority stations over here, the iron smeltery priority station, and that means that when the when the um, when the station over here calls for a train these are going to be the closest ones if there are if there are any of them available and so we will use those first by preference if however we've managed to use up all of the priority iron ore then we can pull one in from a mine and that'll come from further away and therefore will be a lower priority than these ones and that will go into the same station over here the super low priority, on the other hand, is being unloaded here into this warehouse, which is completely full, 25,000 in there, nice, and that's being passed over here, and we'll go into this warehouse if the supply in the warehouse ever drops below 20,000, and it's currently at 25,000, there's another... Um, potentially 100,000 in these warehouses across here feeding it. So in theory, this should never drop down to that level. If it does, then it means we've run into a serious problem with either the mines or the or the core processing, or we're just getting through so much iron that those other higher priority um, systems can't keep up. And so this work, this should work quite nicely. We'll, we'll use up the high priority iron, iron ore first, then we'll call it in from the mines if we have, if, if, if we start to run out of it, and then once the mines run out, or if we start to pull it, use it up faster than we can pull it out of the ground using the mines, then we can start pulling it out of here. So there's the three tiers available there, and that should keep the, uh, keep it using everything in the correct order.
And back over here on Ollie Ran, the the um, the Iron Planet that I was talking about earlier, Mike has tweaked some of these um, inputs over here. So um, he's got some buff he's got some buffering warehouses here that are all, as you can see, they're all absolutely full of miscellaneous stuff, um, mostly iron ore, but uh, there's a, there's a bit, there's a bit of other stuff in there as well. So you can see, you can see the sort of the the ratios we've got going on here. Um, and he's put in these these loaders that are pushing stuff this way if these warehouses aren't full, and then pulling it this way with two two loaders if if they um if they, if, if, if if this one isn't full. So in theory, the idea, the idea is that we obviously we load the train out of this one because that's where all the belts are coming from. But then if there's an excess, it can be it can be stockpiled in these warehouses over here. This is a very strange system. I don't know why he hasn't just got all the belts going into this one and then filtering it through this way because I suspect this will probably work. Actually, I'm I'm not quite sure because I feel like if we start to run a bit low. Or if this if this warehouse starts to empty and we've used up all the stuff that's coming in and therefore need the buffer, we're going to be trying to pull out the ones at this end and they're going to be there's going to be two things feeding this way. Then from this one there'll be two um, loaders feed, trying to feed it that way, but then four trying to feed it that way. So it feels a bit weird. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm entirely comfortable with this system. I feel like you should have just fed the um, all of the resources straight into the first warehouse and then had them bounce through in in sequence and then come out the end here. I. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird system he set up here, and I don't know why he's done it like this. But apparently he has. So, and well, given the given the rate we seem to be getting through iron at the moment, I think this is going to be absolutely fine. We're probably not even going to need to touch these buffers over here. We'll just be able to keep the train loaded with what's coming down the pipe from up here. So it doesn't really matter, but it still feels like a very odd way of setting things up. We talk from time to time about the warehouses of shame, and that's these this, these banks of, um, of of yellow warehouses, yellow storage warehouses down here. And as you can see, there are bots flying in at the moment, just dropping stuff off here. And these tend to fill up with things that are sort of unwanted. So sometimes sometimes it's things like over here we've got, we we've pulled up loads and loads of these gas power stations, and that's from when we were using the free power that worked off the methanol production before, and now we've stopped using that, so we don't need any of it anymore. So we've got loads and loads of these gas power stations that we don't know what to do with. Similarly with the fuel refinery and these relatively low tier modules, although these could be reclaimed. Um, so you end up with stuff like that that being being put in there. Um, there's an enormous number of inserts for some reason. That's probably, again, from the uh, free power being ripped up and we just haven't managed to use all of these up yet. Um, but then sometimes you end up with other stuff in here, like these um, these data cards. These should be put into the system in order for, in order for us to use them for, for science. Uh, we've got a load of um, modules. We could pull these out and use them for making the higher tier modules as well. So they're, they're fairly valuable. Uh, then there's loads of pipe down here. These could be used, um, but and they probably will be. These will be used as preference over brand new pipes out of the assembly machines. It's just going to take a very, very long time to get through this many of them. But sometimes, as I say, you end up with useful resources in these that isn't getting pulled out for one reason or another, like these. This sulphur, that should be out somewhere. We should we should be pulling this out, putting it back into the system and churning through it in order to get it used up and and, and, and make other things from it. Because in here, it's, it's no use. We, we don't we don't need it in here. These aren't building materials. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be in the storage system. And, and as I say, the, the, the modules are all the same sort of thing as well. They should be somewhere else. And then you also get things like this methane ice, and this is all coming from Big Rid, Mark's planet, where he's producing all the vitamelange, and he's just shipping it out because he doesn't want methane on that planet, so he's freezing it into ice and then sending it over here for us to deal with down on Norvis, and unfortunately the way we're dealing with it is just chucking it into the logistics system, so we fill up all these chests with, well, with shame, as I say. And then over here we've got some um, iridium and some holmium, and these again, these should, the, all these things, oh, and there's, there's some rough data substrates, and we needed those. All of this stuff should be fed back into the system and put into the right place. Uh, the problem is that's a big, never-ending and thankless task because, as you can see, we've got, we've got eight warehouses of miscellaneous stuff. So coming over here and trawling through all of it, finding the stuff that should be somewhere else, and then taking it to where it belongs is, is quite a big job um, that nobody's done for a while. Uh, so we, we we have all this stuff. It just need, sometimes you need to tidy it up, and I've tidied up the ones in space a few times. So that those are in slightly better conditions. But these ones down here have just been they've been filling up with rubbish for the entire 172 hours that we've been playing. And yeah, I think sometimes people have gone in and tweaked them a little bit. But basically, it, it they t they tend to just silt up a bit. However, Tristan has been trying to do a little bit of tidying for them by putting in these machines over here. So there's one here for light oil. There's probably, there, I don't see one for petroleum gas. There's one down here for heavy oil as well. And these are using uh, blue chests to call in any barrels with light oil or heavy oil that end up in the logistics system for whatever reason. Um, and some, sometimes it might be, it might be because somebody dumped some in there because they've got them in their inventory. It might be because they've been produced on another planet and not been dealt with properly. Whatever the reason is, if those have gone into the chests of shame, this having a blue chest. Requires 
requesting them means that the bots will then pull them out of those chests, bring them over here, and they can then be, in this case, it can be unload the, the light oil into these tanks and then dump the barrels out where they can go down here to be crushed down, turned into steel, that could then go into a purple chest and be taken away to be dealt with elsewhere. Because at some things, we have systems like these ones where we have the, these green chests which are requesting the, the, the thing, whatever it is. So in this case, it's uranium-238. It's a weird example, but I'll, I'll, I've picked it, so I'll, I'll point at it. And this is allowing, so we're allowing a small amount in this case, it looks like about a thousand, eleven hundred apparently, to be brought in by belt and then fed and fed into the into the chest. But we're also requesting an extra thousand on top of that that will be brought in by bots. So if there's any if there's any uranium two three eight anywhere in the factory, in 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 the logistics system, it will be brought over and dropped off in here. But also on the flip side, if anywhere in the factory, like if if a player requests some explosives or some uranium or some low density circuit structures because they need to build something perhaps, then the bots can come and get them from here and take them out. To them. So it works both ways, and it should pull all of that stuff out of the warehouses. So we shouldn't we shouldn't see any plastic or red circuits or batteries or heat shield tiles or so, and so on and so on in the chests of shame because these should pull them all out. The problem with this is it, it, occasionally you run into when you see like here this logistics request requ is requesting two thousand of them and that has already arrived. Uh, but now you see that there's there's some sulfur being used. The belt is creeping along. A little bit of it is being pulled out, and so this has gone yellow down here. There is now another twenty sulfur on its way over, and boop, just like that it gets dropped off by the bots. So that sulfur that I was pointing out in the um in the, in the chest of shame earlier is being slowly pulled out, and as as sulfur is used up by our main bus anywhere along here, it will gradually get topped up. By by the stuff that's being brought out of the um, out of the chests of shame, and then be topped up by what's what's on this belt here. So this will self clean itself. Um, the problem is there are some things that aren't being brought in like that. So it turns out we don't we clearly don't have anything requesting the the data the rough data substrates, for example, or any of the other things that I was pointing out that where I was saying this shouldn't be here. And perhaps it would be worth going over to the, um, the 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 changeover systems over here and saying we want to pull out any beryllium or holmium or iridium ingots that have got into the system and. And, and just try and get try and get them out and put them into here. And it's a fairly straightforward process. All you need is a, a blue chest like this to request them, and then an inserter to take them out of there and put them into the into the logistics system. And in fact, let's not put those there. Let's put them, put, put that over here so it's in in the in the power coverage of this um of, of this pylon here. Um, also, I suspect we're not going to be. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be. In, we're not going to be in an orange robo robo network area here either. So actually, I need to, would then need to go to here and say actually I want you to be in normal mode. And it doesn't reach. Okay, so there there would be extra extra stuff required. Actually, it's not quite as simple as I was suggesting. But the theory is we can put these in over here, and then we can start requesting the stuff from the network, and it'll be brought over. It'll come out of the chest of shame, and things will work a little bit better. Similarly, over here, he set up a mineral water unbarreling facility. So this is the this is the core disposal area. So this is where all the miscellaneous stuff that gets brought down from orbit that we just want to get rid of gets poured out here into this warehouse where it's sorted. As you can see, we've got loads of iron, loads of stone, and bits and pieces of other stuff, just being all being passed out to where it's needed. But Tristan's now added in a little bit of extra barrel handling up here. So we're doing crude oil and mineral water and pyroflux. So before we weren't doing the mineral water. And the idea is that we can then pull all of this out, put it into the, into the main storage system for mineral water up here, which seems to be rather empty, surprisingly. Um, and then we can, and, and then the, the, uh, the, the empty barrels can be crushed over here and so on. But the point is that this is now a way of disposing of those rather than having them going into the chest of shame. What Tristan has also observed that we, he should do is put in some blue chests along here to request any any barrels of crude oil or of mineral water or of pyroflux so we can get them into the system and again out of the chest of shame. A bit, a bit of tidying up over here as well. We also found that we had more uranium than we knew what to do with, so that was that was a bit of a surprise. Generally, we've 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 tended to find that uranium is something that, well, whilst we're producing a fair amount of it from the core processing over here, it's being used up at least as fast as it's being generated. But it turns out that's no longer the case. We've had we had a crisis of too much uranium over here, which is causing which is causing it to back up all the way along the belts and then jammed absolutely everything else up here. So all of the core processing just just failed, it ground to a halt. Um, and so Tristan's put in some extra storage down here. We've got two warehouses. And unlike the ones I was pointing at earlier on Oliran, he's got some probably got some logic on these ones. Let's have a look. So we're loading the um, we're loading the bottom warehouse whenever this is great, has more than a thousand in it, and we're unloading the bottom warehouse whenever this gets below five hundred. So 
yeah, that might be a little bit more organised than the other one. It should keep, it should prevent things flowing in the wrong directions when they're needed somewhere else. But at the moment, it's just going into here and then going straight out back out into here because despite this having overflowed uh, fairly recently, it's now down to 25 stacks again. So we've apparently ripped through a massive quantity of that. That's like that's a good three trains worth of gone if that was jammed full before. So I'm I'm surprised, but apparently that's what's happening at the moment. I think I mentioned this yesterday, but Tristan has added in an additional station down here. This is called um, Bus Stacker apparently, and this is to steal any trains that are coming down the elevator and then going over to one of these stations without going through an unloading system to make sure that they don't end up um, just just sitting here in one of these stations blocking it um, and this is typically when there's multiple trains doing a run so for example this one that takes up the miscellaneous stuff for all sorry this one that takes the miscellaneous stuff for all of the bus all of the space bus um, we have two trains doing this route and so this is somewhere for for one of them to wait potentially and what train is this one let's have a look at it yeah, this is the space bus station train. So it's, this, this this is this is the one that would be is waiting to go in here. But at the moment, we have enough stuff up there in space that we don't need to have two trains running. Uh, potentially, we could do with another one for the uh, for the train that does the substrates. But to be honest, things it hasn't been a problem yet. Maybe when it is a problem, we'll take one of these trains out of circulation, just send send it off to go and park somewhere, and just get rid of it because we don't want we don't want to. Um, I think it's probably not going to be as necessary to have two doing this one. So rather than having it clog up one of these, we'll find a parking station for it somewhere and then manually turn it back on when we need it. Up here in Norbit, Tristan has expanded production of Particle Stream, that's the pink clouds, because he noticed how much of those I was going to be using over here for the uh, for the matter sciences. So he thought, right, well, well, let's jump in before before it becomes a problem. Let's put in some more machines over here to make a lot more of the uh, of the Particle Stream. So we've got that available. And if we zoom in a bit further on this, we can see that he's now, he's whilst we've got these tier three speed modules in here, he's upgraded the, the efficiency modules to, that looks like a tier five to me. So we're now, we're now bringing these all the way down to only using 70% of the amount of energy they would use if it wasn't for that productivity module, uh, for that efficiency module. Because the speed modules increase the amount of electricity you use and also drastically increase the speed of the machine, the efficiency module drags the, uh, the, the amount of electricity being used back down again and makes it a bit less ridiculous. So if we take a look at the graph here, you can see that the, uh, the particle accelerators are still using 1.4 gigawatts. But if we look back in time a bit to before he did, made this change, then, then they were using 3.2 gigawatts. That's a lot more. You can see how effective it is to have these these tier five product uh, efficiency modules in there. The other the other ones up here are just completely full of efficiency modules all the way across, and so they're um, they're using a lot less power. Um, however, they are also using more power because they're in range of these this this beacon. So it's a sort of a some of some of the effects will make them, make them use more power, some make them use less, some make them faster, some make them uh, slower. But overall, we're trying to keep we're trying to keep them reasonably balanced, so it's producing all of the stuff we need, but not using too much electricity or too many expensive modules. A little further from home, Tristan has also been expanding production of the uh, these the anion exchange beads, aren't they? The uh, the little blue ball things. Uh, so making a lot more of these now, pumping them down these belts over here. Because if you remember last time I looked at the Holmium production, these anion exchange beads were the limiting factor for keeping all of these systems running and making and and how and how much um, Holmium we're producing. And now it looks like there's yeah, it looks like there's probably kind of enough. Um, certainly, if we look up at the top here, we can see that all of the powdered stuff, or the crushed stuff, whatever this stage is called, is pouring through quite happily. It's None of, none of this is backing up, so we have enough anion exchange beads for the amount of holmium, crushed holmium we're producing. So this seems to be running absolutely fine. This seems to be great. Uh, it is a, the belt is running, the belts do seem to be running fairly solid. Not quite full, fully 100% solidly, but there's a lot of stuff running through here. Um, but it is enough to keep the whole system running. And if we take a look at the production graph, you can see that this is gradually over the last 10 hours or so been going up and up and up so um, one hour ago yeah so I, I suspect hmm I was going to say that I suspect it was about here that he, he did he did that improvement that's taken us from this 139 ish 140 to this about 220 uh, per minute but actually he can't have done that. if that was last stream it can't have been that that one because the streams are only about three or four hours long um, so it must have been about here. It must have been going from 220, 230 up to about 270. Uh, that'll be yeah, oh yeah, because these spikes here will be using all of the buffered crushed holmium that was on the belts beforehand. So when you flood in with enough of the uh, exchange beads, then suddenly you can pro you can process all the holmium that's been saved up, and then it sort of settles down a bit to the just sort of a, a new normal of about about 270. So that's 
it's a decent step up, and that's a good thing because we do seem to be a bit short of Holmium. Um, it may need to go even further. I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. But he's got trains dumping it, unloading it every so often here. So there's there's quite a bit coming through. Um, there is a decent supply of Holmium coming through. We just need to make sure that there uh, that what what we've got coming through is is sufficient for the uh, for the needs of the factory. And speaking of needs of the factory, he's finished off some of the upgrades that have been happening out on Snowdrop as well. So this is the Cryonite production. So over here, this second production area has been has, is now up and running almost completely. I think I think he said there's a couple of belts missing in here or something. But basically, he had this this original area was running off the um, off the core mining, um, and now he's got a second area down here that could potentially take some more core mines into it if they weren't if he wasn't already dealing with all of the um, all of the uh, Cryonite core chunks. But instead, we'll, we'll now bring in a steady supply of um, of Cryonite ore that comes in from uh, from this mine over here in fact so this can all be fed into here and we've now got in theory got double the cryonite production available so now we should have a decent healthy supply coming out yeah there's, there's uh, some that comes up around here past the guns and then down here and it all feeds into this warehouse down here and as usual we've got a train that goes round and round and round we'll come down here we'll grab some cryonite and miscellaneous other stuff take it back up to uh, to to orbit around this planet and then, as you can see here, it will load it into the spaceship to be taken away for uh, processing and, and use elsewhere. Once again, if we look at the Cryonite production over the last 10 hours, you can very, very clearly see where he made this upgrade. So, previously we had about, just under, a bit under a thousand uh, Cryonite rod per, per minute being produced. Now, it's uh, now it's gone all the way up to 2,000 per minute. So, he's literally gone in, he's got the second setup running, so we're now producing literally twice as much. It's gone from about a thousand to about 2,000. That's fantastic. I, I think that's going to be absolutely wonderful for the amount of um, resources for the resources we need because if we, if we look over here we can see that we're getting through um, currently we're getting through about 800 per minute so I think it probably would have been fine before but only just it has peaked in the past up to 2000 per minute being used so I think having this extra extra rate of production is going to be very very useful and if you look at the two the averages are pretty close together so that's a good sign that increasingly uh, increasing the supply is a very good idea so this should make things a lot better Finally, on the resources front, I went into the shopping list here in Norbit and changed the and, and removed the request for the various tier three modules that were being brought up, because previously they were being brought up in the bus train over here, and that meant because there isn't there aren't belts over here feeding them in. I mean, there could there could be now because we've got these ones available down down here so we could feed them in but they so they were but but before they weren't being brought over they weren't being fed in that way and that meant every tier three module that was being taken up to space for the production systems elsewhere around the solar system were all being brought over by bot dropped off into this blue chest and loaded into the train which isn't the way we like I like to play this game so it was it was that was has been frustrating me for a while so I thought right now that I've got the mo new module city up there and we are bringing up the uh, the modules on mass but this way I will get rid of all of those requests from in from uh, from the from the, sp from the shopping list in space, or and in order to make sure, absolutely sure, I added them in into this uh, negative shopping list over here. This is the thing that says never bring any of these things over from through the through the Roboport network, because up in space, over in Module City, where all these get dropped off, they're being put into a green warehouse here, and that means these this warehouse can supply all of these modules to everywhere else they're needed around the around the factory. I should put in some logistics requests down here actually to pull them in from anywhere else they're being stored because that's just a waste of a waste of storage space elsewhere. Bring them over here. So we always have a buffer over here and this is the source of all of those modules. So they'll be brought from here and uh, they'll be brought and they'll be replenished by the train. So I'll stick some massive massive logistics requests in here. But I'll do that I'll do that a bit later. But this this theory this should work quite nicely just to make sure that the uh, the modules now are being brought up by by train to train rather than bot to train and that should make should make things a little bit nicer the downside of this is that anywhere that requests modules now they're going to have to come from here uh, all the way over to wherever they're needed rather than from the warehouses down here which are probably going to be a lot closer to anywhere where they're being requested so it's not 100% perfect but it does stop us having to fly them all the way across Norvis planet itself so I think this is a I think this is a very large improvement uh, and it's going to make things a lot nicer I've also started bringing stone up in the very very standard generic way it's coming up from the uh, coming up uh, from the train in on in, in Norvis being brought up dropped off onto the belts put into the put into the uh, into, into the bus system here and as you can see we now have a nice supply of it on, on the on the belt here it was previously coming from recycling down here however having it um, however we're now sending all of the stuff from recycling down to Norvis to be processed and dealt with down there so having a supply being brought back up again is perhaps slightly wasteful because it's multiple handling but it means it will at least actually work and we need a steady, not not a huge amount, but we need a steady trickle of stone in order to make these uh, space science packs to get to keep everything to keep all the science running and uh, keep everything happy 
the next thing to look at is over on Big Red, where Mark has been doing some massive expansion of the Vitamelange processing. And this is because we've noticed over the over the time we've been playing that you need enormous quantities of Vitamelange. And Mark did build on a big scale to start with, but it turns out that wasn't quite big enough. So this system here, which is bringing in all of the core chunks, processing them down into um, into into Vitamelange into Vitamelange or, or whatever it calls it and then roasting it into Vitamelange roast and so on up the chain and making all the different things uh, not enough and so Mark has expanded just a little bit over here uh, th now, we've now got Vita ore uh, coming out of, mi out of mines like this all of that is pouring into these pulverizers over here and then being um, processed down into the uh, Vita Bloom and then into the, uh, the Vitamelange Spice Yes, vitamin and spice, and a little bit of extract, and that can then pour out for you. See, there's a little bit of extract there, and then that can be poured up these belts here and go into the further processing facilities up here, which presumably have also been expanded as well. Maybe not so much expansion of that actually. It seems that maybe this was already okay. It just didn't have enough inputs coming in. But you can see here how much we've got all of the all of the um, productivity modules around here, and then a load of speed modules in the middle. So this system is running really quickly. You can see we're, you can see the amount of Vita spice we're churning through to make the Vita extract, and this so this is working nicely. And then we've got a huge flood of it coming in, available out of the top of it here to then go along and make the um, the Vita Blanche extra no reagent up here and more reagent here. And then some, and then they'll be, and then down here we're making the vitalic acid, and then over here we're making the bio scrubbers, and then all the way over here we're making the vitalic epoxy as well. And there is an entire one machine making that. And it seems to be rather struggling, rather, because it needs, oh, it needs sulfur. So there is presumably a supply of sulfur being, in theory, brought for, brought by the spaceship and dropped off here. But there's a problem with that at the moment. There's a massive shortage of the sulfur. So that's some, that looks like a, a potential problem that needs to be uh, needs to be dealt with. And I don't remember this area requesting sulfur. Let's have a quick look over in um, in Norvis orbit where the Vitamelan, or the Big Ridge ship lands. Here. Okay, no, I'll take it back. It is, it is requesting sulfur. There's a load of it in the warehouses here that can be loaded into the ship when it arrives. So, yes, we are bringing sulfur over. It just It's either insufficient or it has run out on Big Red at the moment. So unfortunately that is preventing the uh, the epoxy from being made. Uh, there's a little bit of sulfur coming in along here. That seems to be being made from any excess oil that appears from goodness knows where. I'm not quite sure where that's going to be coming from. But anyway, there's a bit of sulfur being made. So that is keeping the system trickling over, which is why you're seeing an occasional vitalic epoxy head out on, on, the, on the belts here. But it's not enough to keep it running as we would like to see. So I did, hopefully um, we'll be able to get an upgraded uh, improvements to the uh, to the ship design or or just have it bring a massive quantity of sulfur over and then and then the and then the system will run here because we do need a lot of the vitalic epoxy in order to make some of the higher tier productivity modules and also to make some of the higher tier biological sciences so yeah there's there, there, there's some work to do here May, and maybe once that's got up and running we'll be able to have a few more machines here making it because it does seem it seems odd to only have one machine here even if it is being wide area beaconed and is also already one of the very very fast chemical plants I don't know we'll I'll, I'll leave that up to Mark to decide what's needed but uh, yeah at the moment it's clearly the sulfur that is the problem here Mark has been extremely busy building mines so he says he's put in three Vita mines as one two three and two and, and a stone mine somewhere as well it might be might be that one although that looks fairly empty I imagine it's probably a bit further away and I'd, 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 oh, oh here it is this one over here the, yeah so there's a supply of stone coming in here for the for the uh, processing and he says he's put in a mineral water mine as well which is uh, interesting because that's something we don't often need uh, and I, 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 I don't know where that is, but some, some, somewhere there will be a mineral water mine that's bringing in, again, bringing in min mineral water that's being used for, probably for one of the acids that's required for making the vitalic acid. Yes, over here we need the mineral water to come in um, to make the, to make, basically to make, to, make, to make the nitric acid, which goes into the vitalic acid. I mentioned he's expanded the, uh, the the reagent system, so we've got more and more and more of these now. So we have a lot of the dark green bottles, the vitalic reagent coming out. And that is, well, it, it seems to be, seems to be starting to back up now so maybe that means we're finally okay for these but again this is another one where we use an enormous quantity of these and once this system starts running I bet this is going to absolutely rip through them it's going to pull huge amounts through here because as you can see as, as is usually as is usually the case with uh, vitamelange processing you need lots of the previous step to make the next step so it's six re vitalic reagents to make one vitalic epoxy and that's quite a lot he's also done a bit of messing around with the trains over on uh, over in in Norbit that are carrying all the miscellaneous um, bio stuff around uh, all of the all the various different vitamelange products um, because it wasn't working very well before so now in theory it, it'll only unload the correct stuff in the correct stations and it should be a little bit more intelligent we'll uh, we'll see how that works uh, but the problem is there's too many different people asking for different things from the system and that's made it a bit complicated
I ran into some unfortunate friendly fire problems over on Talos, so I've had some of the uh, the energy glaive beams, these things, that just wander around the map, uh, destroying all of the biters they can find. I'm not sure which one this is. Presumably there is a biter somewhere up here. It's not just burning rocks for the hell of it. But eventually, oh, maybe it's going after this guy. I don't know. But, if, but the idea is this energy glaive will wander around the um, around the, uh, the the surface of the planet, killing off all of the biters and making the place a bit safe. Oh, look, there's another one up there. I had about four of them before, but they started being a, they started misbehaving a bit. So first off, the, fir the first one sort of wandered through the rails down here and damaged some rails. And I think it blew up one of the pylons, which was a bit unfortunate because it meant that then this, this outpost over here lost power. And so we stopped mining. We had enough beryllium though, so I wasn't too worried about that, but it was still a bit of a pain. Um, and then that happened a couple more times though, because there were some biters in this area in here and the, uh, and the, and the beams were going after them and, and going up and down over this area. Very, very destructive. Uh, and then one of them ripped through the corner of this outpost here, something about this sort of line, like this, destroying loads of belts, loads of um, loads of air purifiers, just generally causing absolute havoc in this corner. So at that point, I had to go out there and fix it all up. And we've turned off some of the um, we've turned off some of the glaive beams to make to calm things down a little bit, and that seems to have seems to have helped, or at least very much the ones that were doing the damage have been turned off, and the other ones are now far enough up at the north that hopefully things will be okay. But yeah, that was very destructive, very annoying, and I had to go over and do lots of repairs so um I, I i did and then and then came back again <laughs> Over on Taras, the Immersite planet, we had some interesting issues. So, the, processing the um, the Immersite produces enormous quantities of um, of sulfur, and so previously that was all being all coming around here, being poured down this way. Some of it was coming, and then it was coming down this belt and, and being fed in here in order to make uh, make sulfuric acids to make the Immersite juice, in order to make the Immersite powder, to make all of the stuff that we actually need. Um, then. That, that was the priority. Then the lower priority was going off over this way, and then it was shipping it all out using the delivery cannons. And that seemed extremely wasteful, so I thought, let's not do it that way. Let's, let's, get, let's, 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 let's not. Let's turn that off. So now, I've, I've, put, I've added in some extra belts, so that the, um, any excess sulfur... So we've still got a priority for going down here to make sure we never run out of sulfuric acid for the, uh, for the juice. But I put in a, a lower priority feed that then comes around here, up around this way, and then we'll attempt to feed the sulphur into the train that goes up to orbit as well. Uh, and I've also then put in these um, these belt watchers along here to, to tell the train to depart, either when it's full. There are there are many many rules on on this train. It can depart from the ground when um, when it's completely full, great, or when it's run out of um, rare metals and has been waiting for absolutely ages. Or when I think the train is full based on the sort of the circuit conditions we used before and it's been waiting for a relatively short time. And this seems to be working very nicely. The train will now come over here, it will unload lots and lots of rare metals which we need for making the um, the Immersite plate, so it's great to have loads of those available. And then it will load up with sulphur and with Immersite plates and if there are any available, if there are any needed, it will also load up with Immersite crystal. But we're currently getting a, a, a signal from the, um, from the other end to say we are currently only asking for Immersite plates, we have enough Immersite crystals. So we are going to be filling up the, uh, the spaceship with um, sulfur, imosite plates, and then sending it off. We don't seem to have any other scrap, which is a bit weird. I'm wondering if that is still going out to delivery cannon somewhere, but I, I had a quick look and didn't find any. So it, that is a bit of a mystery to me. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I think it might be, oh, it's because we don't... No, we do have core chunks coming in, so... I, I don't know. Um, I might need to look into where all of the uh, all of these things are going, and just make sure there isn't anything f any any funny business going on. But this is loading up nicely with the with the plates, as I say, and then with the excess sulfur and the and it's unloading the uh, the rare metals here. So this now seems to actually be working quite nicely. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it, of course. But uh, the system seems to be working quite well. And now, so the thing is though. Uh, because we're now sending this sulphur out by train, that means it ends up in Norvis orbit, being unloaded here along with the crystals and the and the plates. And so we needed to work out what we were going to do with it. And um, I was a little bit too slow, so some of it got dumped into here. As you can see here, there's a load of sulphur in here. That's a mistake. That shouldn't be there, but um, never mind for now. Uh, so we've got the yeah we've got the sulfur then flowing into the uh, in, into the warehouse here, and I've put in a couple of extra belts along here that say uh, to saying actually we would like to take the sulfur out this way, and then it can be fed down here, and then it can be passed into the ship that goes over to Talos because Talos needs lots and lots of sulfur, so we can feed it in there, or we can feed it back along the belt along here into this storage chest, and then that means that from here it can then be taken into the ship that goes off to Big Rid. Uh, I could have run the belt all the way along here and put it into the the warehouse over here, but I decided there wasn't any point because. 
it, it, it's, it's a lot further, and everything comes from this 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 storehouse here, this strong box here. Sorry. And so what I've done here is I've got it going into this one from here by priority. But if this strong box ever run, starts to run a bit too low, then we can load more in from the supply that's being brought up from Norvis. So the theory is. All of the extra planets, like Talos, should be being fed uh, their, their their sulfur by what's being brought over from Taras, um, because that's a byproduct that we need to get rid of. However, we're not, I, I don't want to gamble that these will be always be taking enough away to keep this keep, to use up all of this all of this sulfur and make sure it's, it's, there's never any left over. And so. I've come, in, I've come in here to this combinator where normally we say don't pass anything through unless there's 10 million of it. So 10 million immersion plates, batteries and crystals. And you're never going to hit 10 million in this warehouse. You can't fit it in there. So that basically means just never, these, these inserters should never feed out immersite crystals or immersite plates or, or the batteries. Fine. Uh, but we don't want, but we want to have an emergency overflow for the sulphur. So I've set the sulphur to minus 20,000 20, because 20,000 is an amount that will fit in this warehouse. I think it's, it's 400 stacks. And so if it goes over 400 stacks in this warehouse, which it's actually has. Oh no, it's not quite there. But if it ever does go over 400 stacks, then these will act as an overflow and pour it out into into the into the warehouse up here, where it can be taken away by the normal junk train system. And if it does, if the train system does that, it will take it down to Norvis, and eventually it'll be unloaded into here. And that was previously was a problem because it was then getting put into this purple chest and therefore being sent off, put out into the logistics system. And that is why there was some sulphur in the uh, in the in the chest of shame that I was pointing out earlier. So we've now fixed that problem. We shouldn't be putting any more in there, but that's why there was some there before. So now instead, it now we now have a, a Tristan put in a new station over here. So we now have an unload system that will take the sulphur out and put it into this warehouse so a train can come pick it up and it'll then be taken away to be used for all the things we we need to use sulfur for. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that uses sulfur, um, but it will be picked up from here by priority because I went in. I, I edited all the trains to say go from from sulfur drop off. After that, go to bonus sulfur, which is this new station here, uh, first, and try and load up. Then, if, if it's if it's available. So at the moment, they won't go here. But if if there is any sulfur here, they'll come here, load up, and then go off to uh, sulfur drop. However, they will go still go via sulfur pickup and check there. So they'll come here, fill up, then go to here, go. Oh, I'm already full and then carry on to here. So it's a little bit inefficient, but unfortunately I'm not aware of a way in Factorio of saying go to this station if it's available, otherwise go to this station. At least not without doing incredibly fiddly and complicated things that I don't want to think about. So this system will work, it just means a, an extra train journey occasionally on the rare occasions that there actually is enough sulphur in this bonus station for the train to come and pick it up. The next place to take a look at is Kothar, Mike's Iridium planet. So Mike says he's added some new uh, new iridium mines on this planet. So there's another th another three of them. It could be these ones up here, perhaps, and over here. Yeah, oh, okay. he's put a little flag over here saying new mines. There's a couple of them. There's a couple of them over there, uh, and, and a third one there. Thank you, Mike, for putting in putting in all the all the little notes for me. Very helpful. <laughs> He's also added in another six trains to go off and go and get all of that um, iridium and bring it over to his um, iridium drop-off area here. Uh, and so this should give him a decent flood of iridium coming in to, for processing. Now it is notable that uh, despite the, despite all this extra stuff and despite what he said in his notes, it's still not quite enough. The trains are not unloading quite quickly enough. And so he said that it's not really practical to add in um, additional an additional station Basically because there isn't really space for it. Uh, I suppose it could be put in over here or in the middle of here. It's, it would be, I can I can see what he means. It would be difficult to get in an, in an additional unloading station. Uh, so there are a couple of possibilities. One is to, you know, suck it up and put it in anyway. Find, find a way. Maybe putting it in over here and then having long belts bringing the iridium over. Um, the other possibility would be to have crush the, uh, the first pulverizing stage happening on site by, at each mining area. And then shipping the uh, crushed iridium over to be processed for the next stage and if we look at this we can we can if we look at the recipe we can see that crushing one iridite produces a third of a crushed iridite and also a quantity or um but also might go round again so the numbers are a little bit hard to, to work out there um but I, i'm gonna i guess that means every 0 0.6 iridite produces 0 0.3 crushed iridite so Every two turns into every 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 so so you get half as many crushed iridites out as you put in, and you get some sand as well. But also, 
I believe the crushed iridite stacks quite a bit higher. And so that means if you put it into the trains in the crushed form, you can transport quite a lot more over. However, that does mean it would be rather a big job to do that because you'd have to go out to all of the mines, put in the put in the pulverizers, put um, uh, work out the system, work out a system here for filtering out the sand, which I mean that that'd be fairly easy. Um, but and then re rewire all of this stuff to be accepting the crushed um, uh, iridite instead of instead of the iridite itself. Maybe the way to do it would be to have another station over here that accepts crushed iridite and gradually update the um, the mines one at a time and have it be fed feed the crushed in from the opposite side and then somehow spaghetti it in around here. It's not going to be an easy job. I will I will um, happily admit that, but uh, it would it would solve the logistics problems to an extent. He's also improved his core mining stations, uh, which might be this one, might be the ones on the on the actual core mines themselves, to switch over to the uh, a single warehouse design, and that's just generally good practice for uh, for keeping UPS up as high as possible. And so that brings us on to the research that was done during the last stream. We've managed to do Dexterity 4, which um, improves improves character crafting speed, which is, you know, it's, it's nice to have. Not that big a deal at this stage of the game. And also Strength 4, which means all of our inventories have got one row bigger, so that's very nice to have. We've developed self-sealing gel, which um, is has, does absolutely nothing on its own, but be, can, can be put into all kinds of other stuff in the future. So we, we get most importantly, or most interestingly, we'll get Arco Link storage. I don't know if we'll ever actually use that. Uh, we get thruster suit fours. We get um, productivity module eight. We get lots of lots of other things out after that uh, that will presumably will then require the self-sealing gel. So we'll have to learn how to make that. We develop Productivity Module 8, so that means even more productivity bonuses, so more free stuff, and we like free stuff, so that's really good. And Efficiency 8. Uh, this, again, is a module that reduces the amount of power your systems are using. Not quite as exciting as the Productivity module, but still nice to have, and uh, we, we may well start making these. I've certainly put in all of the infrastructure uh, for make... At least, I put in the machine for making them, and I've fed in the... Um, the extended energy catalogs. We'll need to worry about bringing in chemical gel and dynamic emitters, though. So that's going to be a bit more, uh, a bit more tricky. Uh, we'll, but we'll see whether we think that's worth it at any point in the future. We've generated the plague rocket. Now this is an interesting one. Um, the plague rocket is a it, it's it's a an anti planetary weapon that you can launch using, as you see there, a weapon delivery capsule, uh, and you drop that onto a, onto a planet, and it will kill every single biter on the planet. There are so it's really really effective for making planets safe to go to. There are, however, a couple of downsides to it. One is that it makes the planet uninhabitable, and that means that if you go on the planet yourself, you need to have a spacesuit, and you will constantly be using up um, life support canisters while you're on that planet, like you do when you're in space. So it makes, it makes it a little bit less nice to spend time on the planet. Also, if you fire one at a Vitamelange planet, it kills off all of the Vitamelange and turns it into coal. So, for example, we couldn't use that to make Big Rid safe, because it would also make it useless for what we need it for. That said, we could fire it at Kothar, which has a lot of biters on it. We could fire it at Talos, which has a lot of biters, well, had a lot of biters on it. And it would render those planets completely safe, so we'd be able to expand out however we wanted to, except that we wouldn't be able to breathe when we're on them. So it's, 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 it has advantages and disadvantages. It's also rather expensive to make. Um, that said, none of this stuff is enormously hard to get hold of, and there's probably all of this already in the biologicals area, so it'd be fairly easy to pull all of those out and just have a machine somewhere on there that makes makes a handful of plague rockets. Uh, I Yeah, it doesn't seem too difficult. We'll just have to decide whether we want to uh, pollute other planets quite that much. We've also done deep space zone discovery from 14 to 18, no, 14 to, yes, 14 to 18, which is quite a lot. This is where you have a look in deep space using the telescopes and the research and stuff to find all of these extra solar systems, all of these uh, asteroid fields, and get an idea of what's in them all. So now, we, we, for example, we found Rocky Ridge, which has lots and lots of rare metals. So if we needed rare metals, we could send a spaceship out there. We probably wouldn't. We'd probably get it a different way because this is a long way away. But we can also go, okay, there's, there's Stardust here. That has, a, that has loads and loads of nacrotite. So later on, when we get onto deep space science and start to need Naquium, this would be a potential place to go and get it. Uh, there are quite a lot of these dotted around, so it's a case of looking, f finding um, Kalidas, which is there, and then saying, okay, so which is the nearest one that has a decent amount of Naquotite? And I suspect we're probably going to go to Stardust, because it's the closest one other than Rocky Ridge, and Rocky Ridge doesn't have a decent amount of Naquium. Uh, Sands of Time is another possibility, so, but probably Stardust is closer, so we'll probably go there for our Naquium supply, I suspect. 
we have developed the Mark IV Energy Shield. So this is a, you can make an energy shield, you put it in your armor and it keeps you safe from biters essentially and from other things that will damage you. The problem is the energy shields are not very compatible with the jetpacks. And personally, I would much rather have a jetpack than an energy shield, especially as you have the, um, the other type, there's another type of shield available as well that you can use instead. And those seem, and those do work with, uh, with jetpacks. So I think we probably, we haven't used, as far as I'm aware, none of us have used energy shield yet. That said, if you're going to go in and attack a pyramid, you can't really use the uh, jetpack while you're in there. So the energy shield for that might be quite useful. So I can see a reason to build, build a, a couple of these, especially later on when we start going out pyramid hunting. And we're now getting to things, now we're getting onto things I think that have been researched during this video and so don't really count because we did, we apparently have not researched the med pack 4 yet even though it's showing up here. Um, because, but I think this must have just finished during the during the video recording. Uh, this will be when when we have it, we'll be able to use these to uh, to heal ourselves a bit more. To be honest, I think everyone is quite happy just eating raw fish, so we probably won't bother. We'll just carry on using those. But if we wanted to, we could make some of these to to heal ourselves up a bit more effectively. And there is some other stuff in the queue that will be done later, and I'll tell you about those in a future episode. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoy hope you came along for uh, yesterday's Warptorio stream. If you didn't, there'll be a recording of that available on the channel as well. So that's that's very worth checking out. Warptorio is a lot of fun. It's very very different to uh, space exploration, which is why it's, it's been it's been really nice playing that because it's it's as I say it's a bit different. The next thing on the channel is tomorrow when I shall be streaming XCOM 2. So come along there and have a watch the uh, watch the battles uh, unfolding in front of your eyes and see how see how things go, see how we get on against the alien a different alien menace. And then on Thursday we'll have the Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 stream. So we'll be carrying on with all the stuff we've been talking about here, fixing all the problems I've been talking about and that sort of thing. And then over the weekend we'll have the update videos as usual. So I hope you're enjoying all of the uh, all the content on the channel. Uh, please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of it. There's always something happening here. It's a very <laughs> lovely business channel. <laughs> and um, yes, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.